Hello everyone, today we are doing a total body workout. We have Anna and Marissa here to help. Uh, we're going to jump right into it with our warm up, torso twists. So, using the arms to twist, you're spinning on that back heel, spinning the back heel onto the toe, stretching out the back, just kind of trying to get the stiffness out right now using the ballistic motion. Breathing throughout the movement. From here, we're going feet together in the side bends. Kick your hip out, back and forth. It's very important on this one that your hips don't drop back, but you stay in a nice straight line. Stretch out the sides of your body. We'll do that for about another 10 seconds here. And now we're going to go into our air squats. So, weight is on your heels, knees are tracking out to the sides slightly, drop down, arms are used as a counterbalance, up and down, here we go. Chest stays tall, from the side I'm hinging at the waist first, sitting back into my chair, and then coming up. And if you have the knee or ankle issues, shorten the range of motion a little bit, go down as far as you can, and then as you get warmed up, you'll probably find that you can get down a little bit deeper than you could at the beginning of the workout. So, we're going to do these a little bit longer just to, to generate some heat in here. And the idea is just, you know, what, whatever you've been doing during the day, if, you know, if you're just waking up in the morning, you're probably a little bit stiff, a little bit creaky, or if you've been sitting at a desk all day, you're rounding forward, so we're just trying to open some things up here. Okay, now we're going to do some inchworms. So, I'm keeping my legs as straight as I can. I'm walking forward, and then from here, I'm walking back up, and then I stand. Okay, so, I'll get out of the way so we have room to do it. We'll have Marissa go this way, we'll have Anna go right there, and here we go. We'll get about five each. And what you can do for these if you lack the flexibility to, you know, have your feet together and touch the ground, you can just widen your feet out, and then you don't have to go down as far, and then you keep your feet wide the whole time. Feel free to add a push-up at the end of the movement, and why don't you show us what that looks like. Up and down, just to get the shoulders going. Let's get two more each. Good, and one more. More shoulder work, arm circles, tight circles going forward. It looks like this, I don't want to hit anybody, so I will get out of the way. So small circles, just trying to generate some fire in those shoulders. It might burn, but that's okay, that's what we're looking for right now. Let's go backwards. Good, and keep breathing throughout the movements too. Big circles going forward. Go open those things up, and we'll go backwards. Perfect, we're going right into floor touches, alternating legs. So, my leg is as straight as I can keep it, maybe a slight bend in the knee. I'm touching down, coming up, switching legs back and forth, okay? Go ahead and jump on that, and then I will demonstrate a modified version. What you're going to do for a modified version, let me, Marissa, let me take your spot for a second if you want to step back here so I can show folks a modification. As I'm just tapping down with this back foot and then coming up, tapping down and then coming up, or you can simply go halfway down, come up, halfway down, and come up. Okay, Marissa, jump back in. Whoop. One more each side. And perfect. Okay, last warm up move. Wide feet, hands out at your side. You're doing a windmill hamstring stretch. So you're here, and then you're here, back and forth, back and forth. Opening up your chest as much as you can at the bottom of the movement. Try to get that opposite hand pointing to the sky. There we go, looks good. About 10 
more seconds and then we will be ready to go. Ready to go to work. Three, two, one, and here we go. So we're jumping right into circuit number one. We have four exercises. We're starting off a little bit easier here and then as the workout progresses, we'll get a little bit more challenging. So girls, go ahead and grab your dumbbells. We're going to start off with a single arm shoulder press. I'm going to grab one here. Very simple move. Palm facing you. Slight bend in the knee. You're just twisting, pressing up, and then coming down. Up and down. 60 seconds, okay? Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Alright, so what we're focusing on here. Uh, when, when a lot of people do shoulder presses, as they press up, they'll kind of like take their head and hinge it towards that off arm. Really focus on keeping a neutral head position here so as not to strain the neck, okay? Now, if you have shoulder issues, it might be tough to come all the way down to that chest. If it is, what you can do is just kind of shorten range of motion, come up, drop down. You can even keep the arm right here, just stay right here. We're going to be going from upper body to lower body to get the blood flowing to different sections of the body. Okay, we have about 10 seconds left. Good, keep breathing. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Dumbbells down. Next exercise we're doing without weight, it's an airplane, it's a balance move, but it's going to get your hamstrings shaking. So from the side, my hands are out here, I'm on my right leg, I drop back, and I struggle with this one, so it's alright if you do too. And I'm twisting, and then I'm turning, and then I'm twisting this way, opening up as much as I can. You're going to hold that for 60 seconds. To modify, keep a leg lightly on the ground, okay? Here we go, let's go on our right leg first. Three, two, one, and go. There we go, it's important to keep that breath going. Now this one, it, it looks challenging from a balance perspective. I mean, you can see it gets you wobbling. Um, all stabilizer muscles are firing, and little shin muscles are shaking, um, and it shoots all the way up into your hips. A couple things that will help you is if you can keep that core tight, that's going to help your balance. Okay, that's going to keep you from wavering all over the place. If you're lacking range of motion, you'll find that it's going to be harder to open up as much as you want to. If you have good spinal mobility, you'll be able to almost look up to the ceiling when you do these things. But at the same time, when you turn that torso, your balance is going to be thrown off. Okay, we're down to 10 seconds here. Good, good focus here. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. All right, going into an upright row, single arm, right arm. I'm here, nice soft knees. I'm pulling up to the chin. Now, I don't want to have my hand too far in the, mid, in the center of my body. That's going to put a little restriction on my shoulder. So I want to kind of along the right side, pulling towards the right shoulder. From the side, make sure you're not doing any of this stuff where you're pulling away from the body. I see that a lot. You want to draw it along the body and then come back down. Okay, so it's another 60 second one. Three, two, one, and go. Perfect, exhale on the way up. Inhale on the way down. Everyone looks good here. Watch, you know, similar to the shoulder press, Watch the neck and make sure you're not eh, creaking it to the side. A nice neutral position. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you don't have a mirror. Uh, but just stay nice and neutral in this position. Good. Everyone looks good. We're halfway there. Keeping it close to the body. Perfect. 15 seconds, 
Marissa, let me have you turn to the side just so they can watch the side of you again, just in case there was any confusion there. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, last exercise, and then we're going to go through it again as we're getting into a boat position. So we're doing some core. I'm dropping down. My chest is out. Hands are here. Feet are up. And I'm holding to modify it. There's a couple ways. Option one is to kind of keep your hands by your glutes. Option two, lightly set the heels on the ground, but keep leaning back. Okay, so we're going to go 60 seconds. We'll show you both versions here. Going in three, two, one, and go. So this is one of those ones, you know, any kind of exercise like this, if it's a, a plank or a bridge, which you'll see pretty soon, we're going to do some bridges. Um, it's kind of a meditative thing where, you know, I even like to close my eyes during these and just zone out, focus, focus on my breath. I'm going to have Marissa put her hands lightly. Let's bring them forward a little bit, right next to the glutes, okay? So that's another way you can modify. If you bring them next to the glutes, that's going to be harder. The further forward your hands come, the harder it's going to be. As you bring them back, it's giving you more support as needed. But what I want to see is hands next to the glutes and then heels just lightly on the ground. Ten seconds left. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good. Okay, so we're jumping back into it. Single arm shoulder presses are next with the left arm. So we know what we're doing here now. We're going in three, two, one, and go. Good. Now, if you're doing this at home, and you know, let's say this is just too easy for you, and you don't have heavy enough dumbbell. Option one would be just to make get heavier dumbbells, and then it's going to be harder for you. But what you can do to to bring more of a cardiovascular uh, benefit to it is add a little bit of a squat to it so you do squat press. It's not necessarily what we're focusing on right now, but at the same time, you know, I want everyone at home to be able to do, to work with what they have at their disposal because dumbbells aren't the cheapest thing to go out and buy. I understand that. So, you know, work with what you have around the house. So if this is just too easy, add a squat, you're going to find that that's going to make it challenging enough for you to, uh, to feel it. 10 seconds left. Good. Breathe out on the way up, in on the way down. Out on the way up, in on the way down. Three, two, one, and time. We're going into an airplane, balancing on the left leg. We're not going to waste any time. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Good. The challenge here is just making sure they don't run into each other, but it looks like we have the necessary clearance. Looks good. Now, what I want to see Anna do now is try to do this without touching the ground, okay? That changes <laughs> things a little bit. Yeah, because when you touch the ground, it kind of gives you that chance to check in each time, but then if you, if you, you know, keep them off, it goes all into the core, all into the legs. All of those places that we're trying to hit, and then your hamstring will start, you know, twitching a little bit more, all good stuff. Good. And Marissa, with the modified version, her back leg is lightly on the ground. She can even lift it up every now and then, and then tap it back down as she needs it. Okay? Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Pick up your dumbbells, we'll go into the upright row with the left. Three, two, one, and go. And I'm going to grab a dumbbell here. And here's the normal move. And just like the shoulder presses, if you want to make it harder, add some squat to it and then pull up. And you'll feel that quickly. We're mainly focusing on upper body because we're trying to get that upper body to lower body blood flow going on here just to, to get the cardiovascular benefits of doing it that way. 
But if you don't have that enough weight, add a squat halfway there. Good, up to the chin. If you feel it in your shoulder, sometimes when people do upright rows, especially if their hands are too close, you might feel a little shoulder impingement right there. So if that's the case, just shorten it, pull it up to the chest, and then come back down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. And then we'll finish off with a boat. And this will be the end of circuit number one. So we do this one. All right, in a position, three, two, one, and here we go. All right, they are focused, chest is out. Feeling this in the internal core muscles, feeling it through the hip flexors, even into the quads, especially if you're naturally kind of tight in those areas, in the hip flexors and quads, and a lot of people are, if you sit in a desk all day, you know, you're sitting down and your leg is in this position as you're sitting in a chair. So what happens when you're in that position is these muscles shorten up, okay? And then when these muscles shorten up, you know, you start creeping over. So, but that's going to make it, you know, you're going to feel it in those muscles first. That's why we stretch out the hip flexors at the end. But you're going to feel the burn there for sure if you're tight in that area. We are down to 10 seconds. Good, stay focused. Marissa, let me see you those hands up for the last five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay, we're gonna just take a quick 30 second rest. That wasn't as challenging from a cardiovascular standpoint, but we do need to rehydrate. So let's get some water and then we'll start circuit number two. Okay, circuit one is over. We took a quick 30 second rest, water break, we're ready to go with circuit two. Things pick up a little bit more here now. We're doing regular push ups, 60 seconds. We're going to show you a couple different versions. Let's drop down into it. We're going in five, four, three, two, one, and here we go. So Anna's on the regular version. She's going to do the 60 seconds is a long time to do push ups. Um, but we're doing that just to build up that muscular endurance, the strength endurance there. So her elbow, she's not flared out to the side like this. That's going to mess up your shoulders. She's got them down in this neutral position. Her shoulder blades are squeezed together throughout the movement. Okay, even as she's at the top of the motion, her shoulder blades are still squeezing. Now, Marissa's doing the modified version, dropping down in the knees. Good form. Now, Anna has a couple options when she fatigues. She can either drop down to the modified version and keep going, or she can take mini breaks, rest for a second, and then keep going with the regular ones. It's just however you feel like challenging yourself, as long as you're working. We have five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay, we're going from that into our core flutter kicks, so I'm going to have everyone lay on their back. Let me show you a couple things that you need to know here. So, option one, you're laying here with your head on the ground. Quads are flexed, feet are flexed, and you're keeping your feet low to the ground. If this is too hard, your feet are higher, and you do it that way. If this is too easy, extend your hands overhead, making the banana shape. And also, if you have back issues, you can put your hands underneath just to flatten out that lower back. Just make sure you keep those quads flexed. We're going 60 seconds. This is going to burn you. A long time to do these flutters, but it's good for you. Three, two, one, and here we go. Let me have you guys drop down your backs all the way down. There we go. So Marissa's got the modification in there to help out the low back. And it's doing the regular version. She's got her head off the ground, and what that's going to do is it's going to engage 
the upper abdominals a little bit more. So this is, by nature, it's more of a lower abdominal exercise, which is you know, the exercise that most people need uh, the work on because that's where a lot of the, the body fat gets stored. But when you raise the head up, shoulder blades up, you'll get upper back. Now we have you extend the arms overhead behind you, and then there's even more of a change, and then if she drops them down even more, it's even harder. We have 10 seconds left. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. All right, flutters are done. We're going into plank rows here. So I'm going to grab my tens and I'm setting up in a push up position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm holding this plank, my glutes are squeezed, pulling up, and then switching switching, okay? There's a, always a place to modify. We'll show you that as well. Let's get into position. And we're going in three, two, one, and go. Okay. So Marissa, similar to the push-up, she's on her knees. And is doing the regular version. The goal here, and it's really challenging, but the goal as you row, the natural tendency is to have your hips kind of like shift with you to help you open it up. The goal is to have a minimal hip movement. Anna's doing a pretty good job with that right now. As she fights to make the change though, you can notice the increase in difficulty here. If she gets tired, just like on the push-ups, she can drop down her knees or she can take a break. Or you can just hold that high plank, you know, if your lats start giving out, if, if your rear deltoids start giving out on you, just hold that high plank. Ten seconds left, we're almost there though. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay, last exercise of circuit number two. We have overhead back lunges, so I'm going to grab these tens again, and my arms are overhead. Apologies if my hands get cut off here, but hands are overhead, and then what I'm doing is my core is tight, I have a back lunge, and then I switch, back lunge, and switch. Okay, and then I'll give you a couple cues along the way to help you with the form. It's 60 seconds, three, two, one and go. All right, so what I want to see Marissa do now is I want to, I'm going to show you a few modifications with her. So the first modification is to shorten that range of motion and not go all the way down in the back lunge, almost kind of like a step back and then come up. So if you have those knee issues, you know, that's the first thing that you're going to want to change. Um, the second would be, you know, as you get to the end of the 60 seconds, your shoulders might give out. So, you can either set your weights down, you can stack them here. What my preference is here is to set your weights down and keep the hands overhead just to keep that core engaged because it's, you really can't mimic that overhead motion. And then what you want to watch for is the rib cage. So you don't want to get rib cage out, arch back, you want to keep it closed off, but still keep the hands overhead. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, last circuit of this workout, we're doing cardio, starting with side shuffles. So, you're getting down low, and you're shuffling side to side, tap down, shuffle, tap down. Use the space that you have in your living room. If you don't have a lot of room, then just shorten the distance. We're going to go 60 seconds. We'll show you a couple different versions. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. There we go. So, Anna's booking it side to side. She's staying low. That's the main thing. We want you to stay low. 
IB is showing the modified version, just kind of stepping side to side and then squatting. So with anything, just do what you can with it. As long as you're as you're pushing yourself, as you're working hard. Okay, so this is you know it's kind of like basketball practice where we used to do those side shuffles. And you can do that too. You can put your hands out to get a little shoulder burn, tap down, tap down. A lot of different ways to do this one. We're coming up on 40 seconds, so we have 20 seconds left. There you go. You just want the quick feet, but you want to stay light on your feet too. You don't want to be pounding the ground the whole time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and good job. Okay, from here, we're turning to the side. Left leg forward, right leg back, hands up. Knee to your hands, come back down. Use those abs, crunch into it, come back down. Okay, option one is just nice and slow here. Option two is just to fly through it. 30 seconds each side. Three, two, one, and go. There we go. So, you want to go fast, but you also want to land lightly with that back foot. But what you can do to make this even more challenging, step further back, lunge lower, and then come up, back lunge, back lunge, okay? But the main thing is to make sure you're under control with this. We're switching in three, two, one, right to the other side. There we go. We have both versions going. Pull with your abs, keep it contracted. You don't want it to be just hip flexor. You want to use the stomach. Here we go, finish strong. 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay, from here, we're going into floor touch jumps. So drop down, tap the ground, and then jump up. Try to stay on the one leg, tap down, jump up. To modify, just kind of tap down and stand. Tap down and stand. 30 seconds each side. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. There we go. So this really lights up your hamstring. It works your balance. And then you get the quad explosion on the way up. But the main thing is it, that it does is it gets your heart rate sky high. We have 10 seconds left on this side, then we're going to switch. Three, two, one, and let's go to the other side. There we go, looks good. And you know, like anything, your left leg is different than your right leg. When I'm balancing on my left leg, I'm, I'm not bad, I'm actually pretty good. But when I switch to the right, it's a different ball game and I'm stumbling all over the place. So you'll probably notice that when you're doing these. And then keep your leg, you want a slight bend in there, but if you, if you lack flexibility and range of motion, then you can do a bigger bend. Two, one, and time. Okay, so three exercises gone. We just have one left. It's the burpee. It's the one that everyone hates, but it's good for you. So I'm dropping down. I'm hopping my legs back, forward, jump. Okay, to modify, you're going to go back. You're going to go forward and stand. If it's too much for you to get down like that, just get into high speed squats, okay? Here we go, 60 seconds. Finish it strong, three, two, one, and here we go. There we go, we're working core, we're working lower body, we're working our hearts, and you're working flexibility as you drive your feet forward and you get down into that squat. If you're lacking range of motion, another thing you can do is you can widen your feet so then when you jump forward, you're in a wider stance and you don't have to get quite the stretch in your hamstrings. We're over halfway there already. Keep pushing yourself at home. Little breaks if you need to, but we're almost there. So just push through. Okay, 15 seconds. There we go. 
Modify, step back, step forward, stand. Five, four, three, two, one, and we are done. Nice job, everybody. Take a little drink of water, or what we're gonna do right now is just start cooling it down. So we're just jogging in place a little bit here. Never wanna just completely stop and crash when you're done. You wanna keep moving a little bit. So just light jogs into a little jumping jack. As you can see, it's not a full range of motion jumping jack, just kind of moving the arms and the legs. From here, we'll go into leg kicks. And gradually just lower the kicks down until you're basically just shuffling back and forth. Okay, from here, feet together, side bend. So, kick the hip out to the side, stretch the right side of your body, look up towards your hand, and just breathe. And then we're gonna drop down into the other side. Solid work though. It's always fun to finish with those, those high intensity intervals of cardio at the end. Quad stretch, so grab the foot, pick out a reference point, or just use a chair or a wall. The knee comes in tight towards the other knee, and then your glutes squeeze forward on that right side, and just hold that. Heart rate should be slowing down a little bit. Now we're going to the other side. And what's great about these total body workouts is you get, you know, if you push yourself to an intense enough level, you'll get that nice afterburn effect. You know, when you do the steady state cardio or you're out or you're jogging or you're on the elliptical, you burn calories while you're on the piece of equipment, but then it kind of stops when you're done. And this kind of stuff, it keeps going. So wide stance, let's drop down and stretch the hamstrings. Just hang, you can either put your hands on the floor or fold them, keep your quads flexed so the legs stay straight. Just relax right here. You can rock it back and forth a little bit. Take both hands and put them towards your right foot, the right side. Both hands towards the left. And now you're going to put your hands to the ground, take your right leg, drop it back behind you, and you're taking your inside arm right here and dropping down. I'll turn to the front so you can see at home. You're just kind of sinking down. We work those hips pretty hard, especially at the end. So you want to stretch these out to keep them from locking up. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, switch the legs. Right leg is forward. Now what you want to make sure you're doing is you want to get a straight line from knee to ankle. So you don't want to be forward here, but you want to be right here and then sink that inside arm down. And then we'll drop back down into the child's pose. Breathe through this, sink your hips down into your heels, lengthen with your hands, and hold this for as long as you want to. If you still feel tight, just go through the stretches again. And thanks for joining us, everybody.